Magic, how, how are you going to be doing that? What size loans are, are you imagining? And, and what kind of businesses are, are, you, are you hoping to get money to? Well, I think, <clears throat> you know, what Raphael and I want to do is to make sure that, you know, we're going to vet these companies. Uh, that's uh, Raphael's job. <clears throat> we're going to write the check, Equitrust. Uh, uh, we've already written a $100 million check. And then he's going to uh, deploy the capital. But the main thing is we need to keep these businesses open. Also, too, those business owners need to keep their employees. And so this will allow them to keep their employees and also keep their doors open. And we have to remember that these businesses have been in urban communities for a long, long time. They've been doing great things. They probably didn't have a relationship with the banks when the stimulus package went out. So now we're able to say, hey, you can have a relationship with us. You can keep your employees, keep your doors open. And that's what we want to do, make sure that minority-owned firms, women-owned firms can uh, stay open. And last but not least, you know, financially, this has really hurt our community, the urban uh, community, as well as health-wise has hurt our community, too. So with uh, Raphael and I coming together, uh, this is really important. And so uh, he's going to work with the SBA, and we're going to make sure that these great firms are able to keep their doors open. Raphael, in terms of being able to get that money out the door quickly, how do you vet these companies, <clears throat> especially ones that historically you wouldn't have had a relationship, which has been one of the great challenges for a lot of the banks? You know, the great thing that the SBA, you know, Administrator Carranza and Treasury, uh, you know, the great thing that they did is simplified the application process and made it easier to qualify for these loans. So at the end of the day, we have to go by the guidelines that SBA set, which the bar was lowered to the point where every business that's out there can go online right now because there's a ton of money left. And this is a call to action. What we're trying to do is make sure we vet everybody to the standards of the SBA and assure that this money goes out. Because the next step in this uh, procedure is working with a depository bank to multiply Irvin's investments into a billion dollars or more. So that's what we're doing next. But we're doing what the SBA wants us to do. We've been in business for 21 years doing supply chain finance for minority vendors. So we know this space. What we're trying to do right now is expand that to help others that are not being helped by the banks that they do business with or don't do business with. And if I, if I can add, those checks will be different sizes yeah. because the companies will, will need different uh, amount of capital to stay open. So it won't be a certain amount to everybody. It depends on what you need to help you stay open and also help you to grow, too, grow your business at the same time. Right. Hey, Magic, what did you think when you heard that, that the Lakers had, had asked for the PPP program originally? It feels like the goalposts on, on these programs have moved a little bit. They returned the money, but I'm curious sort of what your first, first instinct was when you heard that news. Well, I think we were all surprised. And, um, uh, but at the same time, you know, in this climate, nothing should surprise any of us, right? And so, uh, but they returned the money. They did the right thing. Uh, Jeannie Buss is a very good owner and she's smart. So I'm glad that she returned the money because there's a lot of companies out here who really need that money. And she, she was smart enough to, to understand that. Right. You used to own a, a, a lot of movie theaters back in the day. <laughs> you, you, have any, 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 you have any thoughts about when we're all going to be sitting in movie theaters ever again? I think we will be sitting in them, but uh, not uh, probably until probably, I think, next year, because they're going to have to really figure out how we're going to social distance in a movie theater and everybody is, can stay safe. So I think it's going to really um, take some time to really figure out how are you going to sit everybody where they're still six feet apart, mm -hmm whether that's on the right or left side of you or in back of you, right, and in front of you. So movie theaters really going to have to figure it out, as well as gyms, too. 
you know, a lot of the gyms, you know, I work out all the time. And so how are we going to stay safe in a gym and at a, in a movie theater? And, and my wife and I love to go to the movies. So this is going to affect us big time. And so I, I'm, I'm really curious about the strategy they're going to have uh, to keep us all safe when we go back to right. the movies. What, what about professional sports? Do you think that, that, that everybody can get tested? Do you think people can stay quarantined in a hotel? Do you think there's going to be people in the audience, not in the audience? This, this is your I, business. I think that when we go back, no people in the audience right now. Uh, if the NBA comes back, Major League Baseball starts, uh, MLS soccer, I think you're going to see all those sports come back, but empty stadiums. Uh, also, probably testing the players. Uh, probably have to do that almost every day and uh, especially before games. And so um, because we need it, America, we, we thrive on our sports. We, that's how we escape our everyday life is to uh, indulge ourselves into sports. And so we need sports to come back, especially if we're going to continue to stay home. Right. So we just need sports right. to come back make us feel good, and we can cheer for our teams. Okay, I, got a, I have a business leadership question for both of you. <laughs> but Magic, uh, you know, we've all been watching la The Last Dance. It's been unbelievable. Right. But it's raised also, you know, what Michael did on the court and his quote-unquote management style, if you will, uh, could be tough. I think that was one of the, the big reveals uh, of mm -hmm. The Last Dance. If you didn't know that already, you probably knew it because uh, he, was, he was talking <laughs> trash in your ear the whole time. But the question is, does that leadership, which he said, you know, he paid a price for, does that work in business? You're seeing a lot of people try to do business analysis on Michael Jordan on the court versus the business analysis of being a CEO. What do you think? No, I think it works in sports, no question about it, because that, that style worked for Michael Jordan and his Bulls. I mean, winning six NBA championships. But in business, you can't, you, you really have to understand that, Every employee is different, right? And you have to understand how to motivate them and how to make sure you get the, the best out of them, 150% out of them. And so my management style is to hire them, not to micromanage them. I hire the best people, smart people, smarter than myself, and then let them do their job. And then also pat them on the, on the back and encourage them. So that's always been my style and I will continue to do that. And Michael Jordan, that style works in sports, but in business, I don't think that style works. And we, we, we've seen it now, right? When, when, when you got talented people, they're going to say, you know what? I don't have to deal with that. I can leave and go to another corporation. <laughs> so talented people have choices, just like uh, uh, Michael Jordan had a choice to have that style in sports, but in business, those employees would leave and go somewhere else because there's, there's so much competition out here in business. Okay, final question, because we got some numbers coming. Andy Roddick actually was on Twitter last night, tweeted in for you a question, Magic, okay. uh, which is this. What's your favorite, proudest post-basketball business accomplishment and why? And he wants you to take the Dodgers out of it. Okay. Well, it's really easy. The thing that really made me a legitimate businessman, I have to give Howard Schultz and Starbucks the credit because when I built those 125 Starbucks in urban America, everybody thought no way they were going to work, uh, that it could make money, it, it can be successful. And we were able to prove them all wrong. And so that, I will always have to go back to Starbucks and also give a big thank you to Howard Schultz to for believing in me, trusting in the urban community, and we made money, and now he built thousands of stores, or Starbucks has built thousands of stores in the inner cities, and that's what it's all about. Okay. Uh, Magic, we appreciate it. Raphael, we appreciate it. Good luck to both Thank of you. Thank you very much. Come on back uh, and give us a progress report when you can. Thanks, you guys. It. Thank you. Thank you very much.